Welcome to Tying Michigan's Best Trout Flies. Today we're going to be tying a, a parachute fly that's uh, the most famous parachute fly in use for Michigan and the Midwest's most famous mayfly hatch, the hex hatch. So let's get started. We're going to be using a size 6 3x long hook. Now that's a big hook but these are huge mayflies. Uh, some of them measure as much as an inch and 3 eighths excluding the tail. So a 6 3x actually is an average size hook for this hatch. So we'll put that in the vise and I'm going to be using some 3 aught uh, yellow monocord. And I'm going to cover the shank with that thread, take it all the way back to the bend to start with. And we're going to attach uh, the beginning of a trailing shuck at the bend of the hook. Uh, right about there and our tail or this portion of the trailing shuck is going to be made out of a clump of pheasant tail. Now this is a pretty good size fly so we want a pretty good size clump of pheasant tail in order to imitate that trailing shuck. Maybe something like that. We'll just cut it off and then make sure that that's the length of the hook not the shank but the entire hook. And we'll take it back to here and secure it with a couple of wraps and then take our thread forward. Uh, we're going to tie on the body of this fly right about here. Now the body of this fly is made going to be made out of out of deer hair. Now we use light tan deer hair for that. I've got a section here that we can cut a, a, a section out of that and don't be too worried about the, the tips on this whether they're even or not because it's just going to simulate a part of the trailing shuck back here. So take a nice section of that deer here like that and then when you put it on we're going to measure it so that some of these tips extend back about half the length of the pheasant tail. So you can switch hands now and you want to bring it up to where you want the body to be tied in, maybe right about there. When you get where you want the body tied in, just hold it off and then trim that flush. Now it makes it easy to tie the body on. And we, this is a key to, to making this fly secure. A couple of sturdy wraps right here at the front to secure that. We want the deer hair to flare up like that. That means you've anchored it nicely. And then just smooth this back with your hand and take some firm but looser wraps toward the bend. And when you get to the bend, about three or four more snug wraps. The snug wraps at the bend and at the front there are what really anchors the body on this fly. And you'll see that the tips have flared up. We want that as well. It, it makes it look now like a full trailing shuck back here. We'll take our thread back to the front Again, firm but looser wraps, overhand wraps, and a couple of, uh, again, snug wraps right through the butt ends of that deer hair. That'll help to secure it even more. We'll come in front of that, and here's where we're going to attach our post. Now, of course, we're going to use white deer hair for the post uh, in uh, just a small clump. It doesn't have to be real big, but uh, cut off what you personally want and... We'll tie that in at the front. Now, when Clarence Roberts tied these flies, uh, he said, cut it on a bias. In other words, we're going to cut this on an angle. <laughs> and when you cut it on an angle, it takes a whole lot less wraps up front here to deal with the excess. Now, we'll just take a few wraps and bind those down. And then a few wraps in the back toward those butt ends that were sticking up the deer hair body that firms it up and it makes the deer hair stand straight up just like that. I'm going to stop right here just for a minute because this fly is oftentimes referred to as a giant Roberts Drake. It's a it's a hex parachute and indeed technically it is both of those things. Uh, but this fly originally was tied by a man named Earl Madsen, a guide in the Grayling, Michigan area. He was the first person ever to use a deer hair tied parallel to the shank. He probably tied this fly sometime around 1940 and it was originally known as Madsen's Hatching Caddis. And indeed, when Clarence tied his, these flies this size, he always referred to it as the Hatching Caddis. Now, uh, that was a, a, an erroneous name for the hex hatch back then, the Caddis Hatch. In fact, uh, some of the old timers in the Grayling area today still call it the Caddis Hatch. But it's Earl Madsen's fly, and he called it Madsen's Hatching Caddis. So now we're going to post it, 
holding it uh, the post in our right hand and uh, taking some wraps with our left, catching it with the middle finger in our right, and around. Uh, this is a bigger fly, so we may have to do this perhaps eight or ten times to get a good secure post. But we go up, come back down, and, and now our post is in place. We can tie in our hackle. Now, the hackle on the original was uh, two dark ginger or, or two brown hackles, but I prefer one brown and one grizzly. So that's what I'm going to use. You can you can use whatever you want, obviously. So I have the brown uh, laid on the bottom, and we'll just take some of the fibers off there so we can make a, a path to it, attach it to the shank. Take it behind the post, and with a few overhand wraps, attach it snugly to the shank. So now we're ready to put our hackle on. And when we hackle a parachute, we start with hackle at the top of this pathway that we just made. And when we do that, it ensures that our hackle is not going to fly off the top of the post. And you wrap each wrap beneath the one that came before it. So successive wraps go below the, each one that came before it, all the way down until you get to the bottom or until you feel like you have enough hackle on there. Uh, maybe five or six times, and now we're ready to tie it off. Snug it up, wiggle it a few times, make sure it's firm, and just hold the hackle back out of place with your hand like that. A few wraps will secure it. We can trim the excess, and now we're ready to whip finish. Once again, we'll take our whip finisher and put it in place, and then simply hold the hackle back out of place again and do the whip finish. A few wraps, and now we're just about done. Pull it tight, uh, trim your excess. You can you can groom the the hack a little bit. See if there's anything out of place. Maybe take it out, turn it over. If you have any errant fibers, you can trim them off so it floats flush. Back in the vise, in our hex parachute, or Robert's Drake, or really Madsen's hatching caddis is done. A terrific fly. It's caught many, many large brown trout.